total battery drain in five minutes. Oh, I never back into trees. I must be tired. It's okay, Willow. When you're low on energy, a nap can help you recharge. Maybe you should have one. I will, Marco. Just as soon as we fix our power problem. Audrey, where is Anira's photovoltaic power station? Photovoltaic? Power station. Also called solar parks. They're places with lots of solar panels that turn sunlight into lots of electricity. There is a photovoltaic power station a short drive from here. <sighs> Why don't I drive? We're here. Ready to go. Buckle up, Polos. We're off. What's going to happen if we run out of battery power? Nothing too bad. Whew. Whew. Of course, the Polomobile will stop running. It will. And we'll be stranded here by the side of the road. Stranded away from the beach? No, 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 no! Marco, we are not going to run out of battery power. Warning. Battery power nearing zero. Almost there. I'm awake. I'm awake. Let's plug in. Quick. Come on, everybody. Run! We did it! Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah! Power back on. Battery charging. And all thanks to... The sun! So slap on some sunscreen and put on your shades. Here comes the sun, smiling at me. It gives me a charge of energy. It tickles my skin, helps flowers grow. It makes us feel happy, happy. Here comes the sun, the day has begun. That sunny glow is how you know. Let's go have fun. Get up, get up, get out in the sun. It feels so good to be outside with all my friends. Now that the Polomobile's recharging, shh, so is Willow. <sighs> <laughs> kind of like that one. <gasps> it is one! And it's doing it! Sea turtle! Sea turtle! Oh, it's a baby sea, sea turtle. turtle! Lily did say lots of pictures. Okay, I'm done. Seagulls? Oh, this is bad. Seagulls are predators of baby sea turtles. Predators? You mean they want to eat it? But it just hatched. He's helpless. Poor turtle, poor turtle, poor turtle. Poor turtle, poor turtle. Grab it. Put it in the water ourselves. Huh? Nash says he wants us to pick it up and bring it to the sea ourselves. That's a great idea! Yay! Nash, wait! In nature, it's best to let creatures do things by themselves. We should only pick them up if there's no other way to help them. <sighs> Go away, <laughs> If we could scare them off, it could give the turtle time to get back to the water. But what are seagulls scared of? Caterpillars? Thunder? Broccoli? Aha! Uh -huh. Seagulls are afraid of hawks. So we'll make hawk sounds. They sound like. Um. Uh. I don't know about hawks, but your farm animal impressions are great, Gorby. Here's what a hawk sounds like. Nash. 
Ash, we need to be way louder to scare them. I've got an idea! Audrey, play the hawk sound through the polar boat speakers as loud as you can. Raising volume to maximum. Nash, now would be a perfect time for a picture. All right, let's take some photos. <laughs> of the sea turtle, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. This must be where the ants live. When ants work and live together, it's called a colony. I wonder what kind of ants these are. Oh, look it up. Looks like they're leaf cutter ants. There are leaf cutter ants all over the rainforest. So they cut up leaves and bring them back to the colony to eat? Actually, no. They chew up the leaves and... They're turning them into goo. So they eat the goo? This is the amazing part. Another living thing called fungus grows its spores on the goo as it decays. The ants eat the fungus that grows from the spores. Unbelievable. They cut up the leaves to feed the fungus, and then they eat the fungus. These ants are fungus farmers. Wow, there are so many of them. It says there can be eight million ants in a colony. That's a lot of leaves to cut, goo to chew, and fungus to farm to feed everybody. They must have to be really well organized to get everything done. <gasps> Organization. That's what we need to get all our stuff back into the polo mobile. We just have to act like the ants. Okay, remember, everybody pick up the first thing they see, bring it back to the polar mobile, and put it away. Then go back out and pick up another thing and bring it back and put it away. Just like the ants. Just like the ants. Let's go! for you to lift, Nash. We little ants. Big. Ants can carry 50 times their weight. That's like you carrying 50 Nashes. <gasps> Hold on. We'll help too. Yeah, and here we go. <laughs> now we just have to get it inside. Actually, I've got a better idea. How about lunch? Oh, oh yeah. yes. three. We carried it so we get to eat it. Yum, yum. But we don't have to turn it into goo first. I'm just glad it's not fungus. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta keep up to it. But not too close. Just close enough so I can see its camouflaging skills in action. Want to take the wheel, Gorby? Do I? <laughs> I mean... Do you want to drive? Oh, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> hmm, the octopus must have gotten scared again and camouflaged itself. How can we get close enough to watch it without scaring it? Hmm, stop the polymerine. <laughs> I'm having an engineering moment. Huh? That means she's got a great idea for something to build. Finished. <laughs> Corby, would you please press the button? Oh! Boom! Whoa. Amazing! Our polo marine is camouflaged! Thanks, Willow! Now we can get close to the octopus without it noticing us! Along with any other Cepha... Cepha... Lepods! Yes, 
cephalopods who might swim by. <gasps> Look, there's the octopus again. <gasps> it's uncamouflaging. It doesn't see us anymore. You're better at hide and seek than you thought, Gorby. Hey! Go, go, go! <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Nash. Now we'll blend in anywhere. Even in a herd of zebras. Octopuses, cuttlefish, and squid Chain sheep in color Just so they stay hidden Disappearing right before your eyes It's nature's best disguise Oh, you're so sneaky, cephalopods Masters of mystery All because of camouflage These cool creatures They know how to blend in any setting, like coral rocks and sand. They can change the texture of their skin. There they go again. Oh, you're so sneaky, cephalopods. Masters of mystery, all because of camouflage. I bet you can see me, cephalopods. Looking like seaweed, all because of, all because of. Changing to Polo Marine mode. And down we go! Hey, it says here that the ocean has different zones that get different amounts of sunlight. Right now, we're in the topmost zone, called the sunlit zone. Plenty of sunlight can reach this area, but the deeper we go down, the darker it gets. Below the sunlit zone is the twilight zone. Here, a little sunlight can reach. And below that, deep, deep down, is a midnight zone. Light can't reach here at all, so it's completely dark. Wow! It's getting really dark. Uh, it's kind of spooky. I'll turn the headlights on. Whoa! What is that? A rat tail fish. It's named that because of its really long tail fin. In the deep ocean, only plants and animals that can survive extreme pressure live here. And most of them look very unusual. Ooh, like that creature. Yes, that's a type of sea slug called a nudibranch. It's cool, but I don't see Nash's dolphin. Ooh, what's that thing? What is it? Wow, jellyfish. <gasps> and they're glowing. When a creature can make its own light, it's called bioluminescence. It's very useful when there's no sunlight around. Lucky dolphin! <gasps> Nash, you found it. The glow from the jellyfish helped you see where your toy landed. Oh, yeah. Way to go, Nash. All right. Got it! Nice, nice work, work, Willow. Dolphin. Here you go, Nash. Good as new. Ah. Hey! Oh. Just a little soggy still. <laughs> is full of grooves. Do you think those insects made them? Like maybe they ate the wood? Let's find out what they are. They're termites. Too bad termites can't talk. They would have been close enough to see what happened to the picnic log. I don't think so. Most termites can't see. Actually, I think we're just seeing a few termites. Look, termites live in colonies. There can be more than a million termites in a colony. A million? That's a lot. Around here, the colonies are underground. But in other places, they build these. They are wow. the, the mounds are their nests. 
And at the center is the termite queen. It's her job to make sure that there are more and more termites. She is one big termite. It says that termite queens can grow to be as big as your thumb. She gets so big, she can't move around. So all of her children take care of her. So what do termites eat? Wood, right? It says here that most termites like to eat rotting wood from falling trees. That's one of the ways decomposition happens. Decomposition? What's that? That's when old rotting plants break down and return their nutrients back to the earth. So that new plants can grow. Hmm. I know what made the picnic log disappear. You figured it out? You know where the picnic log went? Yes. The amazing Lily will now amaze you by explaining the disappearing picnic log. Yay, amazing Lily! The picnic log was a fallen tree. Right. I just never thought of it that way. And fallen trees are the kind of rotting wood that termites like to eat. The termites made the picnic log disappear. They ate it. That's decomposition. Exactly. Now the only thing that's left of our whole picnic log is that one little piece of wood. And the termites are eating that too. That is yeah. amazing. Thank you. So the disappearing picnic log isn't a magic trick after all. No, it's part of how nature works. I miss the picnic log, but I still like it here. It's nice to think that it's feeding other plants and animals so that they can live and grow. And speaking of feeding, picnic! And now I, the amazing Lily, will perform another amazing trick. I will now make the sandwich disappear. Huh? Oh. Oh. 